okay. Uh, so this uh, lecture and, and the lecture following this will be to give you a flavor for what you are going to see in the course. Okay. So the idea here is, is to form some sort of background for you to be able to appreciate the context of this course as part of your engineering curriculum. Okay. Why, why does this course exist? What are you expected to learn during the course of this, this semester? Uh, how it may help you, how it may help others, that, those sort of questions, well, broad questions. Uh, we will not spend too much time on specific details for which individual lectures followed by lab sessions will be held anyways. Okay, so the idea here is to get an overall sense for why this course and where it is going to go. Okay. So in doing this, we will touch upon uh, a few sort of philosophical ideas, ideas that do not necessarily have to do only with this course, but uh, surely it will have something to do with this and as well as create the grounding for you to be able to appreciate some of the statements that will be made later on in this course, uh, especially the next lecture. So before that I am going to uh, liven up a little bit. So I am going to try and find out why you are here. So uh, multiple choice question. So I am going to put four or five choices there and after each choice is put up there, you can raise your hands. Okay. Uh, if you, th you think that that statement is representative for why you are here. Okay. Uh, first statement, I think attending classes helps me get better grades. I am not asking for a vocal response. I am asking for a visual response. Put up your hands if you believe yes. Okay. What is that? You can, you can shout into the mic if you want. Second option is Hello. heard that this is a good lab course, so want to learn. Third option is Janta was going to Convo and I followed. Fourth option is I am here for attendance. Hmm? So after, after all this gimmickry, I am going to ask for serious hand shows at the end of it. And last option is I have nothing better to do. Okay. So, this is going to last for another two minutes, okay? So you can enjoy for another two minutes and then the, the rod will start, okay? So A, who all say A? Okay, put your hands down. B. So, which don't you agree in this? That you didn't hear that it was a, uh, that you heard that it is a good lab course or that you want to learn? Which don't you agree? Uh, second, you move, leave the class. Number C, number D, okay. and number E. So mo most of the students are not opting for any of these. Right? None of the above also should be an option. Right? Okay, anyway, I got a sense for it when I first put up the options. So, uh, so we'll stick with that. Okay. Okay. So I am going to ask a few people now what they think this course is about. Okay. If you are if you are going to be vocal and act smart in front of your your group of friends, I will pull you up. Okay. So I am going to pull the guy who spoke from there, speak into the mic. Who is the guy who spoke from there? Come on, let's see if you have the guts. Everybody knows it's you, so just, just pick up the mic and speak. Pick up the mic and speak. Hello boss, it's right there, you pick up the mic and speak, yeah. Next to you. Don't know. No, you said something else. Come on, show us your smartness. Something like measurements. Something like measurements. <laughs> Guy with the blue shirt there, can you pass the mic to him? You have to say something intelligent. Huh? 650 of your fellow students are listening to you. Experimentations and it's a lab course on experiments involving measurements and so this is what you think this course is about 
So you have gone through Moodle, I guess. Anybody else who can speak openly? Uh, red shirt. Sir, uh, the lab is about uh, it, uh, the lab is about what the teachers think of the students about what they don't know and they need to know. They think that we do not know certain experimental skills and certain measurement skills. Uh, yeah, but uh, the last year's grading shows that we all know uh, such things because most of the people got that A square in the. Okay. Anybody else? Now that you have vented all your feelings about this course, somebody else. Um, I don't have any idea actually about this, but uh, whatever you um, think it is, I've just read the name on Moodle. So it's all about measurements. So what what comes to your mind? The first word was measurement. So uh, <laughs> nothing blank. Yeah. Okay. One person over there, I am going to pick the, the purple or maroon shirt girl, the right there, yeah. I think this course is about uh, different types of measurement, the way we can do measurement through computer programs and stuff, probably, this is just a guess. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I am going to store these answers by the way. Your long winded answer also is going to be stored and we will see at the end of the course if what you are saying is right. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to uh, think a little bit about a couple of basic questions and uh, the idea is to have a bit of a discussion. I mean obviously if you are 650 you are sitting in front, it is not possible for everybody to speak up at the same time. So I am going to orchestrate the discussion a little bit, right? but the questions I am going to ask everybody to think about and I will randomly pick people to answer. Okay? So you can't just chill out there and unless you want to be embarrassed. Okay. Uh, first question is why do, we, why do you think we need to experiment? Okay? I am not asking this question for an immediate answer. So I am going to say that lot of people around you, people, media, textbooks, teachers, professors, whoever they may be, they keep making claims about the physical world. Okay? I am going to throw a few of these claims that a lot of different people have made at different points in time, not a lot of different people, different people have made at different points in time, which have had far reaching consequences on how human beings have reacted to these claims or the scientific community in, in, in particular have reacted to these claims. Okay? So I am going to throw a few of these and mind you, I know for, for sure that at least 95 percent of you have not verified these claims on your own, if not 100 percent. Okay? So do not snigger at the claims because I am going to ask you to verify one of them later on. Okay, so the first claim, a falling body accelerates uniformly, it picks up equal amounts of speed in equal time intervals. Okay. So how many of you think this claim is valid? How many of you think this claim is valid? If you answer no, I will pull you up and say why do you think it is not valid? Only four, four or five people think this is valid. Green shirt there. Tell me why it is not valid. Why you think it is not valid? Speak into the mic. The mic is coming to you. Can you put up your hand please or should I give you an aarti and say put up your hand for that? Huh? Okay. So one more call. How many of you think this is valid? Okay. So some more respectful souls. Okay. Second claim. Water can be transmitted to gasoline from extracts from a bush. How many of you think this is valid? Next claim, all species of life have common ancestors. Who all think this is valid? Fourth claim, 
speed of light as measured by multiple systems that are moving with different but constant velocities always yield the same constant value. Fifth claim, a single molecular layer of organic material between 10 to 20, 20 angstroms that behaves as a transistor has been assembled. How many of you are agreeing to the statement? Or you think it's valid? Okay, there are two. So I'm just going to uh, name, the, name the people who made these statements first. Uh, any guesses for number one? Okay, Galileo. Number two? So there was a guy called Ramar Pillai. In 1996, he claimed that he could make gasoline by taking, taking some jadi booty and mixing it with water and heating it up. Okay? Now it took a lot of effort, maybe for the right or wrong reasons, for the Indian scientific community to refute this claim. In fact, he wrote a dossier and sent it to the Prime Minister's office. The Prime Minister's office sent it to the Department of Science and Technology and after that a lot of different people could not refute that this was indeed not true. Okay? So this is not some, some bogus stuff that uh, I have just put up here. It took a lot of effort for somebody to say this is not true. Of course it, it was not true eventually. It was found to be not true. He was trying to fool people around. Number three. Okay, Darwin. Number four. Okay. I am sure a lot of people don't know who number four is, but it's, that's fine. Number five. How many of you think this may be true? Okay. So I am going to pull that blue shirt. Uh, yeah. Why do you think it is true? Why do you think you, you think it is true? Sorry, the, the other guy. So I will pull up somebody else or from here. So like, I believe it is true because a lot of advancement have been done and we have also studied about thin, fl thin film coating, so I think it may be true. Oh, why, not, why not number two? A lot of advancement has happened. Number two can also be true. Yeah, actually I read uh, in the newspaper that they are going to... So I am going to make a... I am going to make a postulate, okay? That is, I am going to claim that the reason you think it is true it, is that it doesn't sound bizarre. It sounds like uh, authentic, okay? Anyway, so anybody else who think it is true or it looks like it is true? Um, I, I know that uh, some advancement has been done with organic semiconductors, but I am not sure of the specific details. Um, so I believe that it's true. Okay. This guy here. Sir, I had read about uh, azulene molecules being used as diode, a single molecule of azulene. Okay. So, I think… So, you read, read about it somewhere and you, you think it, is, it sounds intelligent? Yeah. Okay. Yes. One more person. So, everybody is saying the same thing. I read about something somewhere, organic semiconductor, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have heard uh, that a lot of advancements are being taken place in this field. So. Okay. Uh, this last statement was proven to be one of the biggest scams of physics of the modern era, okay, last 20 years. So there was a guy called uh, Jan Hendrik Schoen, okay, from Bell Labs, who published a series of articles in very reputable journals, uh, claiming something to this effect, okay. This is not an exact statement, but the different statements put together claim something to this effect. It, uh, it was shown to be uh, a lie. A lot of different people tried to replicate this experiment, found that this was a lie. So till now nobody has done this. Okay? Just that it sounds, sounds cool. A lot of people got fooled. Okay? Just because I say organic material, single layer, molecule and all that, people think, ah, it's got a so, so these sort of statements keep getting thrown at you. You keep reading stuff. Some guy in Times will report in the technology section that you know researchers somewhere have found out that this has happened. Blah blah blah. Right? Then professors come and tell you, or your teacher in your 11th or 12th standard would have told you something about number one: falling body accelerates uniformly. Okay. A lot of, I know that almost everybody, even, even though you didn't put up your hand here, you believe that this is to be, this to be true, number one to be true. 
whether or not you know if it is true, you, you have got through your JE because of this. Hmm? Okay, so now I am going to ask one of you or again two or three people to say why they think number one is true. First of all, do you think number one is true? Yeah, it is. Why, why do you think it is true? Because I have learned that from my sixth class. So suppose I type, type number 5, I know I am telling you number 5 is not true and you can go and check it that number 5 is not true. I type number 5 in your textbook nicely and put it up there and told your teacher to keep repeating it. Will you think it is true? Never thought about that. No, I am asking you to think about it right now. Suppose number 5 appears in all textbooks of 11th standard. Will you believe it is true? Yeah. Okay. So, one person from here. Uh, basically because um, mostly professors and all tell us this stuff. So, we think that it is true. What, what, what? If you are told to do not touch a tiger, so you, you will never say hi to a tiger. Okay. Okay. So, like this itself, we have been taught uh, this way that when a body falls. So, are you saying this statement is like a tiger? M Sir, will you just like for fun stroke a tiger? I am not making a claim. You are saying stroke a tiger. I am making a claim huh. that you do not strike a tiger or make fun of him. Anna, and I am telling you, I am warning you. So, will you go and strike him? Uh, all, all those who clap, uh, all, all those who clap in celebration of irreverence, right, you are missing the analogy. There is no analogy here. Okay, I am not asking you to do something dangerous, right. I am asking you to tell me whether you believe something is true or not and why you believe something is true or not. And your answer is that somebody has told me I am not going to question it. That is your answer. Okay? That is fine. Anybody else who has a different, different take on it? That is not true in the presence of air resistance. And uh, why, why are you making this statement? Sorry? Why are you making this statement? Who told you that this statement is true? See, in the presence of air resistance, one can see that it's not true. One see, can see you, means what? If you, I can't if, you, see. if you drop a feather, it floats down. It doesn't fall down with constant velocity. Is it? Is it saying that it does not pick up equal amounts of speed in equal intervals of time? A feather, if you drop it here, it won't. How are you saying that? I've seen it. You've seen it? Yeah. You have actually measured speed? No, but uh, the but what difference no, but is measurable enough. Huh? The difference is visible. I mean, you can see that it slows down. If you drop a stone, then it falls down at once and if you drop a feather, it does not. No, but I am saying something more. I am saying that it gets equal increments in speed in equal intervals of time. Are you going to make that conclusion by dropping a stone and observing just with your naked eye? No. Hmm? No, sir. Anybody else with a different take on it other than my teacher told me or I have read it in a book or my JE classes had had me to do this, other than these three things. Okay, if everybody was like you in 1600, okay, Galileo would not have had a tough time. He says something, everybody believes it. Now I say something else, you will believe it, Professor Hume. Okay, unfortunately this is never the case. If something material shows up, that is going to change your belief ground up. There is always resistance to taking that claim, right, as being true. Okay, and this is exactly what happened to Galileo. They did not think, nobody thought that this was right. Okay, and Galileo had to fight against the church. He had to hide his, his statements like this before it became reality. Okay. Nothing has changed in the, those 400 years as far as human attitude goes. It is exactly the same. You guys are just like the people in 1600s 
who all thought the world were flat was flat because everybody else was saying the world was flat. Masters, teachers, all of, everybody was saying the world was flat. Nobody refuting that. Okay? So nothing has changed. This is a this is a living example that things have not changed in 400 years. So why should we conduct an experiment? Okay, so people keep making claims for your own curiosity. You need to verify if those claims are valid or not. Okay, that's that's one of the main reasons why people conduct experiments to find out if what somebody is saying is really valid or not. Okay, and all of you do this in some some sense or the other, except that the claims that excite you are not all these claims. They are something else. Now think about it. If I don't work so many hours, then I will not get into through the JEE. You don't want to test the claim even, right? You're scared. Okay, well, I, I should work for 10 plus hours. Right? So, the whole point of doing an experiment is to be able to ascertain if claims are valid or they are not valid. Okay? Being able to arrive at logical conclusions of whether a claim is valid or not. Okay? And you are training yourself to become an engineer or a scientist. So you should have some exposure to validating or invalidating claims that are made about the physical world of the sort that we saw earlier. You may not be in a position to conduct an experiment given given the background, given the, the sort of sophistication you require to test some claims all by yourself. But you should appreciate what goes into the conduct of such, such experiments. Okay, And so this introductory course is meant to give you a feel for the sort of issues that you will face in the conduct of any experiment. Okay, And specifically to give you a feel for how to go about conducting some some experiments which are tractable, which can be done over the course of a semester, okay? by means of which we hope to be able to uh, get you thinking about some of the issues pertaining to experimentation in general. Okay? This is what this course is all about. It is not about writing some computer program, it is not about fiddling with some electronics. Okay? Now, during the course of the semester, as it often happens, you may lose track of this. You may lose track of this intent of the course because you get involved in a lot of details. Okay, so let me give you an analogy. Suppose I want to make excellent paneer tikka masala. Okay, that's my intent. Right? Most people here cannot make excellent paneer tikka masala. Right? But suppose you had to make it. During the course of making it, so the whole idea is to have excellent paneer tikka masala to eat. You have to serve somebody else who you want to impress, let us say. Okay? But during the course of it, you have started cooking, you get involved with kitna gas jalana hai, kitna tel dalna hai, kitna rai dalna hai, vagera, jeera, etc. Okay? So you get involved in that and you think that is what the whole deal was about. Right? How much tomato to put, how much onion to put, etc. Okay, so you are going to end up having to do that because unless you do that, you will not get an appreciation of the whole deal. But the point of the course is for you to get hang of what does it to conduct, what does it take to conduct a good experiment. At the end of the course, you should be able to make a mature statement. Hopefully, some of you will be able to do this. That this way of conducting an experiment seems okay. This way doesn't. If somebody posed two ways of doing an experiment. Okay, so that's what this course is about. So, uh, very briefly, an experiment is just a procedure. It's a recipe. It's a procedure to verify whether a claim is valid or not. Now, how you construct the procedure is the most interesting part of the experiment. Because the procedure, what you observe after you conduct the procedure, you should be able to logically conclude whether a claim is valid or not. Suppose you conduct a procedure from which some observations come, but they are not related to your claim, then your procedure is wrong. Okay? So, it is a procedure to validate a claim. That is what an experiment is. Okay? So, hopefully,
hopefully uh, that gives you a bit of a background for what we are attempting to do here. Now there is another reason for why the course is going, you are going to see the structure of the course as it is going to get unfolded. There is a reason why we have structured the course the way it is structured is that uh, it is also an attempt to undo a historical mistake in our teaching methodology. Nobody here has ever validated a claim that you have used so extensively in all your physics. Okay? So it, it's crazy. From 650 supposedly smart people all you know, say, okay, whatever somebody tells me is right. Okay? You don't carry this attitude to something else. Your irreverence is shown in a lot of different ways. You know, but your irreverence is not shown to people or to claims that are made and put in front of you. Okay? So the idea is also to get you thinking about this. That you need to be irreverent about claims that people are making. Not people who are standing here and lecturing something because they have to. Right? So think about it. Okay, so we are going to challenge Galileo. We are going to take a few volunteers from the audience. Seemingly nobody has ever challenged. So I am going to ask you, a lot of people have come here without notebooks and all that. I say, ghumne ke liye But you are going to borrow a sheet of paper and a pen if possible. And you are going to conceive an experiment right now with how much ever little you know. It's okay if you do not know how to construct an experiment. But I want you to conceive an experiment where you are going to tell me at the end of experiment confidently whether the following statement is right or wrong. Okay, a falling body accelerates uniformly, it picks up equal amounts of speed in equal intervals of time. So now I am going to give you 3 to 5 minutes. It's your choice to fool around at the risk of being pulled up. You know, I know who is fooling around. So 3 to 5 minutes for you to think about it. Jot your stuff down in, in a piece of paper. Okay, I want you to be doing something, not showing attitude. I can also show attitude. I am going to ask for the sheets and I am going to read it out with your names on it. Put your names also on it. Hello. So let's see your your gyan. Some people have drawn some pictures, so I'm going to ask them to come and speak. Okay, I'm going to read out some some answers. Okay. I guess you do not understand my question. I said conceive of an experiment, which means conceive of a procedure by which you will verify if this is correct or wrong. Who's Vasudev Paliwal? As we all know, gravitational force is gmm by r square. Okay. Therefore, this is this is true. Prashant Jain, a falling body accelerates uniformly. Delta V proportional to delta T, that is what I have to prove. Okay, this is a little better. Somebody is actually describing a procedure. Throw a stone, this is Shipra Agrawal, throw a stone, pictures with a high speed camera at different times, okay. measuring distance covered in equal intervals of time. It is not distance, we are talking about speed. Rishabh Agrawal, the claim is correct since the given body uniformly accelerates. There is nothing to laugh or cry. You wouldn't have done any better, huh? I say, Baja Reo. <laughs> Avnish Kumar. Acceleration means change in velocity per unit time. However small the time interval will be. So, uniformly accelerating body gains equal amount of speed in equal intervals of time. Okay? Again, you do not understand the statement. 
why is the falling body accelerating uniformly or is that correct or wrong if it accelerates uniformly what you're saying is right nitish reddy has shown a inclined plane you want to explain what it is given the given mic what i'm doing is using a light source that would cast shadow of that ball on a flat surface so i would plot the distance x with time and with that time i'll use the slope and all so what so you, get you how will you use the slope slope no i'll i'll get a graph of x versus t okay so at least you are trying to get a graph of x versus t experimentally we will roll something down a slope shine some light no follow the shadow slope that's actually a ball falling ah. and light source light source so, and you are going to project it against something no on the wall on the ground on the ground okay i didn't get it but anyway that's that's fine so nishan says if a height if a ball is dropped from a height h and if indeed it is accelerating uniformly with acceleration a then we will have a relationship of the form t square proportional to h okay so drop an object from heights 0.5 meter 1 meter 4 meter and note the times we can assert the claim it's pretty good so the the only guy who out of if this is a random sample 6 out of 5 out of 7 seem to be writing some some equations down right there is no equation yet in this claim okay of course you can interpret the claim with some equations the idea of the course is not that the idea of the course is not to do things on paper the idea of the course is to describe a procedure that somebody can actually perform in front of you and sometimes you will do it so we are actually going to perform the procedure that nishant has proposed okay and we will see why it is difficult to perform the procedure so we are going to follow this procedure drop an object from heights 0.5 meter 1 meter 4 meter etc note the times it takes for the object to travel that distance and if the relationship t square proportional to the h holds then you are pretty much there it's not not really there actually this is a corollary of this this statement okay and i'm glad that you preempted me in fact the next slide is that so we will show this corollary okay so d1 d2 d3 the total distance traveled by a body in free fall in time 0 to 1 second 0 to 2 second 0 to 3 seconds are related as 1 is to 4 is to 9 is the claim very similar to this the t square proportional to h claim okay so this is the claim we are going to verify suppose you had to verify this claim and you had to follow this experimental procedure drop an object from different heights and note the times i want you to jot down again what you think may be the problems with such a procedure right now from a layman perspective give whatever the hell you think makes sense but i want to see english words not some scribbling of some numbers i want you also to do it please come down from your high pedestal you have graced the occasion now please write something here again 2 to 3 minutes i want you to write english words on why you think or what what the issues with the described procedures could be just from a layman perspective something your mother or grandmother can say as well and if you have a perspective different from that add that also just a couple of sentences phrases that you think may be issues with the experimental procedure why you think you may not be able to carry it carry it out so the some of the issues the dimensions of the object used ideally we would consider a point object from same defined point second issue errors in measuring time of fall apparatus and human errors so i assume that so who is saying this okay so tanushree prasad so you are assuming that 
some human being is sitting there with a stopwatch and chalu karo di agir gaya fat stop it that's what we are going to do now someone says the height even a height of 3 meters is as tall as a normal room and as the height increases the accuracy and the ease of the experiment suffers time lag in responding to start stop motion of the ball okay that's the second issue someone here says inaccuracy in the measurement of time and air resistance okay so pretty much i mean most people can guess this the tough part of it for a body that is falling under free fall from the normal reflexes that that you see in human beings and if indeed a human being is timing it will be the actual act of timing it things happen too quickly okay so you can do your mathematics 2 meters is going to take around 0.6 seconds 0.6 0.8 seconds for things to fall down right human beings tend to find it difficult to respond in that time if you're sitting with a stopwatch someone has already pointed this out this issue that you will use a high speed camera last time around if you have if you can take snapshots with a high speed camera then you will be able to do a better job obviously all of these are are correct so the main issue is with regard to measurement of time accurately enough okay this is in fact the same issue that galileo also faced so now you are on par with galileo okay so how do you resolve it so galileo resolved it in a certain way we will resolve it in a different way during the course of this semester and in fact you will get this uniform acceleration number also in other words you will get an estimate of g you could use a horizontal beam of light and use a body of some length l then you uh, that uh, we use a device which measures the time for which that beam of light has been you know stopped by this body while falling this would be more accurate because this doesn't involve any this involves light which travels fast it involves light which travels fast i mean this round travels at a pretty low speed so there could be that error as well i won't uh, consider time like one second i'll just fix the height i'll okay, deliver the so height that, that's what he has said uh, i'll you fix uh, the height so maybe i'll put a string thin string and the matlab and attach it to a clock matlab manual clock manual sort of clock ha uh, some sort of that matlab some string which will go and pull a clock yeah to stop it sort of okay and when it hits anybody else in real time you came up with something i feel like ha ah. i was thinking more on the same lines the uh, fixing uh, laser beams at a particular height and then uh, when they intercept the light it's electrically connected to some uh, kind of a device which stop which uh, okay so you are going to pretty much do you won't use lasers but you will pretty much do this during the course of your experiment uh, in estimating g which will involve electrically coupling okay something which gives an indication of whether the object has passed a predefined point or not okay and be able to use a clock which you can measure precisely whose clock beat you can measure precisely avoid human beings doing this so you will end up doing that i think somebody else also mentioned something similar any other way this is not what galileo said he did not know anything about or we think he did not know anything about microcontrollers and all that okay you isko do mic do So, firstly, I don't believe this claim to be true because uh, if gravitation decreases as per square of distance, uh, then no, whatever no. we say that if we say that a body is going with constant acceleration, it's just because our experimental methods are inadequate to prove that the acceleration is not constant. Fine, but so, if you do not observe otherwise, why will you believe otherwise? So, like uh, in case of satellites, or uh, let us say, just the moon, which has been Uh, revolving around the earth for millions of years like if gravitational f- acceleration Who told you the moon is going around the earth <laughs> have you ever seen the moon go around the earth it just appears there um some things uh, we have to take for i'm not asking you to assume anything here 
Can I answer this question without assuming that the moon is going around the earth? Yeah, sir, actually, I feel that there are problems with this experimental method. Like whatever we do, if we, let us say, uh, drop an object from a kilometer above and even in an evacuated sp space and then we observe and then maybe from 10 kilometers above, then we would observe a difference. You will not get this result by the way. You will not get T square proportional to H if you drop yeah. it at 1 kilometer. Yes. So you say it is invalid and move on. The idea of the experiment is not to say that this is correct. The idea of the experiment is to find out if this is correct or wrong. Okay. So yes, what you are saying is right. Any experimental procedure we come up with will have shortcomings. Maybe we could roll a ball from with horizontal velocity. You can roll a ball? With horizontal velocity and let it drop. And we will measure the height and distance it has dropped from the wall. Height and distance it has dropped from the wall. Uh, and the distance it has dropped from the wall will be squaring and checking whether it is proportional to the height it has dropped or not. But why are you separating the horizontal and the vertical? If, I mean, if we assume that it does not have any horizontal acceleration and only… Who told you that? Huh? Who told you that? So, th this was part of the thing I wanted from you. So, you are all conditioned to think in a certain way. Itne sare problems ho gaye. You know, only mg acts when it is in free fall. This is the force and therefore you have an acceleration. Here we are not talking about all that. There is no notion of force here. We are only trying to verify if some statement is true by pure experimental observation. So we can perform experiment very large number of times so it reduces human error. Uh, right? We can perform experiment of taking time at different in time intervals and measuring distance. No, no, and let, let's take one statement you made. By performing an experiment large number of times do I reduce my error? Uh, sir, suppose I have to make I have to make my calculations up to height two h. Okay, so then then I will what I will do I will put a thread and attach to a stopwatch to to uh, to that and when the the, the moment the ball crosses two h, it will just it will ju just cross it have to cross the thread. So it will so the stopwatch will will get on and I will and for the sake of uh, for for counting the error uh, I will just. Uh, uh, let the ball go up to 3H, okay, uh, and you will use a stopwatch and a string attached to it, right? Yeah. And then, uh, then, then uh, uh, at, at the when when the ball reaches uh, up to the height 3H, I I have the time, I have I have its time, okay. So from the total time, I will sub subtract the stopwatch time. I will get the exact time. Okay. So now this guy sees that many bola string you should attach to a stopwatch. He has taken my idea. So somebody else says you you will use an accelerometer. What the hell is that? So it, it is accelerometer is something which measures acceleration. Okay. For example, you could have just said use a speedometer. Uh, Speed measure karega. Bas ho gaya. Yeah. So why not use just some accelerometer like? Why uh, accelerometer? Is, speedometer use karo na. Uh, I am not familiar measure. with speedometer, so I told accelerometer. Okay. So I expected uh, these sort of answers. Most people, when they have to measure speed, so uh, fix a certain tolerance level with the result, and if the calculated result is within that level, then you accept the claim, or else you reject. Okay. That is that is the way you will accept or reject it. And we are talking about the procedure. So I have never seen an audience of 650 people all throwing up hands. Hello, sir. So I'm I'm very glad. I think you drop one stone. Just after one second drop another stone, just after that one, one second drop another stone and take the recordings of the stones while hitting things. That will reduce all the manual errors in each of the stone if you drop multiple of stones. Who will tell you what is one second? That is your normal clock. That will reduce to a very large extent. Okay. One or two seconds, depend. Make a tower of height larger. So if you want to reduce the error, we can increase the height instead of taking… Yeah, that's the same idea. Yeah. You can drop the object on a watch. So when it hits the watch, the watch will stop working. I have so you know the exact time. <laughs> what is it again? I didn't get any any of the thing you said. You have to repeat it so because it was so funny. Uh, you you drop the object on a watch. So when it hits the watch, the watch will stop working. So that way you know the exact time of impact.
when did you release it how do you know that sorry when did you release it how do you know that you only know the time it broke but you need to know the time it elapsed sorry your answer is not right said so drop the watch <laughs> I would have thought this was original, but actually there is a story like that. You know, this is about Rutherford and Bohr. Anybody has heard the story? Sir, I hadn't read it. Sir, no? sir I hadn't read this. Now I know you have read it. You haven't read it? Okay, then very good, very smart guy. So, uh, just a couple of minutes on this Rutherford Bohr thing. So maybe I'll post it online. It's more more fun reading it than me saying it. Okay, so uh, apparently most people, some of, the, some of you have said use some sort of a solution where some beam of light or some, some source of something is interrupted and if you are able to measure time accurately through whatever means it may be, okay, then you will be in a position to make an estimate of whether this statement is true or not okay, or you will be able to conclude confidently whether this statement is true or not. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Some others have said that increase the length, basically increase the distance. And therefore, you have more time, and therefore human errors play lesser of a role in you deciding whether the statement is true or not, which is fine. Which is which is what I would have thought most people, without an exposure to electronics, would would say. And in fact, that's the same thing Galileo also thought. Okay. So Galileo said that we will build an inclined plane instead of letting it drop straight and he made a very interesting observation that the speed of the ball whether you drop it or whether you roll it down an inclined plane as long as it has covered the same vertical distance happens to be the same okay assuming there is no friction blah 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 the speed remains the same not the vertical component so how did he infer this? He con con constructed two inclined planes, one with higher elevation, the other with the lower elevation and saw that the ball went to the same height, more or less. So obviously the speeds that it started off must have been the same. So this observation he made without any understanding of forces, nothing, just an observation. Okay. Therefore he said, I will conduct the same experiment on an inclined plane because the speeds are lower or it takes more time to reach speeds and I can use sort of stopwatches sort of things or pulse beat which is what people knew to find out if such a statement is true or, or false. Okay? So he in fact did that, built an inclined plane, tried to make things as smooth as possible, tried to reduce friction or the effect of, of it, used pulse beat to more or less confirm that what he said was, was right, okay, which formed the basis for what Newton did later on. Okay, so, it is a remarkable experiment, it is actually a historic experiment. We would not be sitting here and talking about satellites, moon going around the earth, sun, all that, had it not been for Galileo who thought about this at the right time okay, or at the time he did. So, it is it's a remarkable experiment, but fairly simple, but the observations are very important, especially the observation that the speed does not change. I do not think too many people would have made the observation if they did not know enough mechanics a priori. Okay, so, uh, we will leave it at that for today. So, the idea, do not don't wind up, okay. I have two more minutes. So, the idea of this course hopefully is, has gotten communicated to you. In the process, you will have to learn cooking, right? You will have to get exposed to how modern experiments are conducted. And for that, you will need to be exposed to electronics. Without that exposure, you will find it, find that you are not using the right tools to do the right thing. Okay, so suppose you had to turn a screw inside, you did not have a screwdriver or you did not know that a screwdriver exists. You will say, no, no, I will only hammer it or I will use my hands. That is not the right way of dealing with it. So, a part of this course will expose you to some of the tools that allow you to perform experiments 
in a modern setting okay and part of the course will try to allude to these sort of questions that uh, that have been raised okay all our discussions pertaining to the course will be other than other than the lab lectures blah blah will be done through moodle all announcements will be through moodle it's your responsibility to take care of the announcements a preliminary info about the course who is teaching it when it when it's going to be taught some sort of what labs are going to be used as well as the grading scheme has been put up on the site already more information will be continually put, be put okay so it's your responsibility to make sure that you are on moodle and you get the information that you need okay. i'm going to have 2 minutes for some questions if anybody has questions put up your hand otherwise we move on can we bring spring balances can we make use of spring balances at your own will we will give you what we have that will give us a rough idea that it's all the it's independent of height and all that oh no no okay the, the point of the course is not this experiment no? you will do a lot of other things right this happens to be one one of the things that you will try out after you are exposed to some tools any other questions you will be exposed to more fun things than spring balance Okay, so we are done for today.